Hello, this is Frank from Think Different Podcast, and right now we're going to do a, hopefully a quick video on the Apple ID, the foundation of it all. So what is an Apple ID? Well, an Apple ID is your account with Apple. It requires, it, it is required for everything you do with your Apple devices, Macs, phones, iPads, everything. It enables your iCloud on all of your devices. Any purchases within the Apple infrastructure requires an Apple ID, your Apple support, and your Apple services. Uh, Apple services we'll talk about a little bit, um, and we'll hopefully get into another video where I'll explain more in more detail. What's the criteria for your Apple ID? Well, your ID should be an active email address, uh, emphasis on active. The password should be at least eight characters with at least one uppercase and at least one numeric. And now probably I would uh, suggest using a special character as well. However, some special characters you, I would not recommend using are spaces and periods. Um, they, they are considered special characters, but I would not use them because sometimes you hit the space bar numerous times and then you forget how many times you hit it and periods are a little difficult to see. It's imperative that you remember your password. So write it down, put it in a book, wherever you feel comfortable with it, as long as it's not taped to your screen. Um, now, I also suggest using an iCloud email, a Yahoo or a Gmail email address. Now, again, no one at Apple has access to your password. I would not recommend using a carrier or a cable email only because your phone carrier or your cable company may change and then your email address is going to change. And then you would have to go into Apple support and modify that. So in order to avoid that, Use an email address that is outside of your phone carrier or your cable, meaning an iCloud, a Yahoo, or Gmail, or any of the others that are available. What should I do if my email changes? Well, the first thing if your email changes, in the event that you didn't listen to the prior one, you set up a call with Apple support. You can go to www.apple.com support. Apple support will call you at your convenience, or you can work through it over the phone if you want to wait. Apple su support should be your first contact for any issue with Apple products and services. You can also use the Apple support app. Now, on your phone, if you go to the App Store, you can download the app from the store. It's a, as you can see on the screen, it's a dark blue icon with an apple in the upper right-hand corner. And you can get help with any of your Apple products that are registered under your Apple ID. You can use the new Apple support app by clicking on it and going down, selecting Apple ID, as you can see here on the screen. Then you can select the, uh, select the support item, meaning you forgot your password, security questions, disable the Apple ID, iCloud, FaceTime, Whatever the case may be, you can follow the instructions right on screen with any of those items. It's very convenient. Now, if you want to reset your password, you can go through that. Now, notice on here it says talk to us now or schedule a call. Now, what's nice about this is if, if, if you want to hang on the line, it'll tell you approximately how long the wait is. Now... The second one is more important to me, is schedule a call. You can schedule a call with your Apple support person. They are Apple employees. It's not an outside service. And then um, you can pick the day and the time that's most convenient to you. To me, that's a big plus. Saves you a lot of time in the long run. All right, let's talk a little bit about iCloud. So, what does iCloud do for you? 
each Apple ID gets five gigabytes of free storage space for backups. If you have multiple devices using the same Apple ID, they will share that five gigabytes. Now, I want to say right up front, computers do not back up to iCloud uh, in and of themselves. There are some ways to get important stuff backed up to iCloud, but we'll talk about that later. So iCloud, it'll sync your contacts, your calendars, your iCloud mail, not your Yahoo and Gmail and others, and notes across all your devices. You can store files in your iCloud drive and access them from any computer. You can access your information from iCloud.com on any computer, whether it's a Mac or a Windows PC. What do I need to know about iCloud backups. Once you turn on your iCloud backups and settings, the mobile device will backup automatically when it is connected to Wi-Fi and plugged into power. If you get a new device or have one replaced, you can restore from your iCloud backup and everything that was on your old device will be sent to your new one. The key here is the Apple ID and the password you need to know your Apple ID, and your password. I can't emphasize that enough. What if I use all of my five gigabytes of the free storage? Well, you can purchase additional at the following rates. 50 gigabytes for 99 cents a month. 200 gigabytes for $2.99 a month. Two terabytes for $9.99 a month. Now, just a year or so ago, one terabyte was $9.99, two terabytes was $19.99. So this has since been reduced in price. Very convenient. So let's talk quickly about your logging in from any computer in iCloud.com. You just type in iCloud.com on the web browser. You'll be presented with a sign-on page. Put in your Apple ID and your password. Again, very important. Once you log in, let's think of the iCloud as an umbrella. And under that umbrella, you have the following items. You have your iCloud email, your contacts, calendars, photos, iCloud drive, notes, reminders, pages, numbers, and keynote, and find my iPhone, which really is probably now renamed to find my devices. But we'll talk about mail. Mail will be your iCloud mail. Not Yahoo, not Gmail. Your contacts are any contacts that you have synced to your phone will be synced to iCloud and across all your devices. Your calendars, the same thing. Now, I tend to use just the applications on the iPhone. I don't use, uh, let's say, Google contacts or Facebook contacts or any of that. I tend to just use the iCloud. Now, it gets a little bit more confusing if you use others to be uh, synchronized, but we can talk about that later. iPhoto, your photos, all of your photos you take on your phone can be loaded into iCloud. Your iCloud drive, any files that you create on a Mac or any of your other devices if you store them in your iCloud drive, will always be available from any device. And that's where I was saying um, it's kind of getting around backing up your computer at home. Notes, very handy. Any quick notes uh, you have across all of your devices is very nice. Reminders, the same thing. Pages, numbers, and Keynote, they are the um, word processor, the spreadsheet, and the presentation package. They are all available on, through the web. It's very nice. And Find My Phone is any of your devices that you um, have misplaced. You can go to Find My Phone. You can send a sound to it. You can see if it's on a network. You can see where it is. If it has been stolen, you can shut the device down. Very, very handy. Um, now, I know I went through this relatively quickly, about 10 minutes. Um, I'm, we're going to follow this up with some additional information uh, in following videos. The iCloud Photo Library, we're going to talk about this quickly. It stores all your photos in iCloud. 
from all of your Apple devices with the same Apple ID, your Macs, your phones, your iPads, your iPods. You have access to all of your photos from all of your devices anywhere, and it will store a thumbnail on your phone, for example, and it will download the full version of the photo when you're connected to Wi-Fi to review. Now, you can also, if you delete a photo from any of your devices, it deletes it from iCloud. Don't think of iCloud your iCloud photo library as a safety deposit box, okay? You can view all your photos and your videos and everything from any of your devices, but if you delete a photo from any of your devices, it will delete it from iCloud. Now, when you delete a photo or video or anything from iCloud fo from photos, it'll put it into a folder called de recently deleted. It will stay there for 30 days in the event that you need to recover it. Or you can go into that folder and delete everything immediately. It all depends what you want to do. And you can also optimize the space on your iPhone, as where I mentioned earlier, that you can uh, have a thumbnail version of the photo on your phone. And when you tap on it, when you're connected to the network, it'll download the full resolution version. Um, it's a good way. Now, I mean, I have over about... 9,000 photos on my phone, okay, with including videos and stuff. So that is, um, and it's a good way to optimize the space on your phone. So 20 gigabytes can store roughly 1,651 pictures, assuming 12 megapixels per photo. Now, the raw photo format will take up much more. Um, is iCloud Photo Library for you? Well, you have to weigh the pros and cons of it. Now, hopefully I've given you some information that will help you make that decision, but you're the only one that can really uh, answer that question. Uh, we've gone over a little over 10 minutes on this, and I, uh, so I wanted to end it here. We'll do follow-up videos on Apple services and other items that you may be interested in. Thank you very much, and hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>